let's talk about finding the velocity maximum in simple harmonic motion. Just take a look at the pendulum and think, where is it going the fastest? I hope you could see that it was going the fastest at the equilibrium position. Of course, at the ends, it has to stop to turn around to go the other way. How about for the mass on a spring? Where's the max? I hope you could see that the maximum velocity occurred at the equilibrium position. And just like with the pendulum, the velocity was zero at the ends because it's got to stop to turn around. Let's analyze the y component of circular motion to see what's going on. There's a tangential velocity in the circular motion. At the equilibrium position, this tangential velocity is equal to the velocity maximum because this is at the equilibrium position as well. When we're at 90 degrees, the tangential velocity is horizontal. It has no y component. The y component is zero. That agrees with the velocity being zero at the top. It can't go up any further. At 180 degrees, we're back at the equilibrium position, but we're going down. The velocity tangential is equal to the maximum velocity at the equilibrium position going down. At 270 degrees, we're at the bottom. The tangential velocity is sideways. It has no vertical component, and that agrees with the velocity being zero at the maximum displacement for the spring mass. Well, here's our formula for velocity in the y direction. It's a component of the tangential velocity. The component is found by omega times r times cosine omega t. Omega t would be the angle. What angle would you put in here to get the maximum velocity? The biggest cosine could ever be is one. What angle would you put in here to make cosine one? You'd put in zero degrees. Cosine of zero is one. That must mean at zero degrees, we're at the equilibrium position. So the formula agrees with what we're talking about here. So this is how we get the velocity maximum. What's omega? Two pi over the period. What's r? That's the amplitude. It's the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. So what's the period? Well, for a spring oscillator, it's two pi square root of m over k. Let's do a little practice. Let's say k, the stiffness of the spring was 60 newtons per meter. The mass was 400 grams and the amplitude is five centimeters. Now, why don't you go figure out what the Vmax is? Pause the video, try it out before I do it. I get a period of 0.513 seconds. We can now go to Vmax equals omega times r, plug in the data, and we get 0.612 meters per second. Well, that's very nice, but how do we know it's true? Well, we have to try it out in a laboratory experiment. So let's say we watch the mass going up and down in slow motion. I zoom up with my camera and I can see that the mass goes past a negative one centimeter mark to a positive one centimeter mark. And then I record it and I count the frames. Let's say it recorded four frames at 120 frames per second. How can I use this experiment to calculate the Vmax? It's just distance over the time the same way we did it with the baseball pitching. The distance is two centimeters or 0.02 meters. And to get the time, we can take the four frames and multiply by one second over 120 frames. The frames cancels out, leaving us with seconds, giving us 0.033 repeating. And that's how many seconds I have. That gives us 0.6 meters per second. Let's compare. That's the experimental Vmax. That's the theoretical Vmax. Pretty close. Let's see how it's done for a pendulum. Here's the setup. Vmax occurs at the equilibrium position. We can still say the same thing. Vmax equals omega times r. Omega is still the same thing, two pi over the period. But the period is now two pi square root of L over g. R is still the amplitude, which is how far back we're pulling it when we release. R is an arc length, which is equal to L times theta, where theta is in radians. And this is also equal to approximately L times sine theta. 
L sine theta is the opposite side. This distance is approximately equal to the arc length as long as this angle is small. For our measurements, we're saying if theta is less than 30 degrees, it's a good approximation. As we've seen in class, if we get too big, that approximation starts to break down. In the video lab, we had 66 centimeters for the length of the pendulum, pulled it back 15 degrees. Can you go figure out the V max? I get 1.63 seconds for the period. I get 0 0.1708 meters if I use the approximation. It's going to be very close to this anyway. I get 3.85 radians per second for omega. And I get 0.66 meters per second for V max. And that's a theoretical value. To do an experimental check, I can see how long it takes the pendulum to move across a distance near the equilibrium position. Again, it's just distance over time. Let's say it took seven frames at 120 frames per second. We have seven frames divided by 120 frames for one second. We get a time of 0.058 seconds. Do the math. I get 0.69 meters per second. And that's my experimental check, which is pretty close to the theoretical. And that's the way we do it.